off of v r talea. And so if we're going to go ahead and graph this, the main important thing we need to understand is the vertex form, which we've talked about, y equals x minus h squared plus k. All right? Please, ladies and gentlemen, if you are having any trouble with graphing, please write down what the transformations are. You guys can see that a, the absolute value of a, is greater than 0. This was in your notes. When the absolute value of a is greater than 0, it's a horizontal compression. Okay. We know that h is going to be your horizontal translation, but there's nothing being subtracted from the x inside the squaring, inside the function, right? You see that? There's no x minus anything inside the parentheses. And then we have plus k. So we know our k, if you guys remember, horizontal compression of 2, sorry. And remember, k is going to be your um, vertical shift. So you're going to say vertical shift up 4. Please, if you're having any trouble with this, make sure you go back through your notes. Remember what those transformations are. And when you have to graph, go ahead and write them down. The next thing I think is very helpful for you as far as graphing is knowing what the parent graph looks like. The parent graph looks like this, y equals x squared. And what we talked about, when y equals x squared, we have a vertex at 0, 0. If you were to make a table of values for positive 1 and positive 2, negative 1 and negative 2, if you plug in 1, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, if you were to plug in 1, 1 squared is 1. If you were to plug in 2, 2 squared is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. If you were to plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 squared is 4. You guys can see that these are reflective about the axis of symmetry. If you were to plug in 3, you would get 3 squared is 9, right? And then you could reflect that point over, and you could say it's over there as well. Does everybody follow me? That's with x squared. That's what we call our parent graph, correct? Now. There's a couple things we need to remember um, about this one. Well, here, again, remember, is your vertex is at 0, comma 0. And your axis of symmetry is at x equals 0. Now, remember, in our parent graph, the reason why we use this is because the vertex is h, comma k. And the axis is x equals h. So when you're graphing a new graph, those are the first two pieces of information that I want you to find. Forget about the horizontal compression right now. All we have is a vertical shift up. Our new vertex, which they actually didn't ask us to find the vertex, but the way I like to do it is all they're looking for is we know we have a k. We don't have an h, though. So therefore, h is going to be 0. So my new vertex is at 0, comma 2. So instead of my vertex being at 0, 0, it's now at 0, comma 2. Does everybody see that? Then the next thing is, so we can basically redraw this, but now it has a horizontal compression at 2. And what I kind of mentioned, we didn't really have time to um, go over a full example because we ran out of time. But basically, all you're going to do is, again, still plug in 1 and then square it. But then you have to multiply it by your horizontal compression of 2. Or if you guys want to use a table of values, just plug in your points. Let's plug in 1. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2 plus 4 is 6. So when I go over 1, I'm now going up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if you plug it in, then you can reflect that over the axis of symmetry. Because the sense of the graph didn't move left or right at all, it's going to be over that. It's going to be reflect over the uh, x equals 0 is your axis of symmetry. Because that's your h, so your axis is still x equals 0. Um, again, if you'd go over 2, you'd go up 4. Well, now you're multiplying that by 2. So when you go over 2, instead of going up 4, four going up times 4 times 2 would give you 8. So I'd go over 2, up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then reflect that over. And let's just double check our work. Let's put in 2. 2 squared is? Sorry, yes? Why are you putting what I'm doing is I'm choosing values. Remember if you created a table of values? A table of values makes up your points, right? 
So if you guys remember an absolute, absolute value, I told you always use the axis symmetry as like your starting point. So the axis symmetry in this case, all the do is the graph is doing is moving up is at 0. So at 0, when I plug in 0, I get 4. Then remember, you should always choose two points to the left or two points to the right. But remember, this graph is reflective. So whatever point you choose to the right, you can find the points to the left. Correct? You can just reflect them over. So if I chose 1, what I get is, if I choose 1 here, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2 plus 4 is 6. So I go over 1, up 6. Let's plug in 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. So when I go over 2, I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's actually a little bit higher. So I go over 2, up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. OK, so it would be over. So 1 is 6, 2 is 12. Does that kind of make sense, or do you still have questions on that? Basically, you need to apply this horizontal compression. How does, the horizontal, how does that 2 affect the graph? We know it compresses the graph, right? But to graph it, we want to at least find two points that we can find. So if we have the axis symmetry, we know what the vertex is, because the vertex is just moved over. Then just pick two points to the right of that vertex, which I found was 1, 6, and 2, 12. And then you can just easily reflect those points over. And now you guys can see that this graph was shifted up too, but it was also horizontally compressed. Okay. For instance, let me just change the problem here real quick. <coughs> 